So, Dave, um, we've just been in what I thought was a very interesting session at Empower, um, and that was kind of looking at AI, uh, the impact of AI, and, and, and a lot about the concerns around AI. Um, what Did you get any key takeaways from that? Yeah, I definitely did. Uh, you know, I think everybody shares a certain level of concern around mm -hmm. it. And it was very interesting, especially me being American and having a chance to talk with folks who are European and South African and, and understanding their views on not just the privacy concerns, mm -hmm. but also looking at, you know, as, as these models are being trained and they're being influenced, but what geography that's happening in. So mm -hmm. the fact that it is very US centric. So is it going to have a certain level of bias that's more um, American type? So that was, to me was was very, very interesting from, from a concern perspective. I think we all have the same concern around mm -hmm. what data is going in there, how is it being secured, you know, how is it being used, is it being used effectively, could it be used maliciously? But uh, but definitely for me, you know, just understanding more of the, the privacy view and, and, and wanting to make sure that's a, a very even keeled system was very, a very interesting takeaway. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, the the cultural differences was something I was going to pick up on because that that seemed very apparent. I mean, obviously, we I think we had somebody from England, uh, somebody from Germany, somebody from Holland and a guy from South Africa. Yep. And there seemed to be a sort of inherent mistrust of anything on your side of the pond. But it's, Americans and privacy aren't really, they don't really go yeah. hand in hand. I mean, you know, if you go back years and years in terms of government oversight, I, I don't know mm. the best way to pet, put it, but generally there's concern about that. And then also how U.S. companies aren't necessarily held to the same strict regulations around hand, how to handle privacy data. So I definitely do understand why they're concerned about it. And data, re data residency is always a concern. So, mm. um, so I, I can't say I'm surprised, but it was definitely interesting to think about, you know, because... Americans are of a certain way, hmm. um, or at least the perception is internationally, and they, they don't want AI shaping their cultures. The America, which I think is totally fair. It's, 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 again, for me, it was an enlightening hmm. way to look at it. And I do, I do think, you know, there is a, there is a sense of excitement, but there is also, uh, you know, there's a lot of fear. And I think, you know, and, and, and a lot of that fear is stemming from, or seems to be stemming from the questions that were come, or the, the comments that were coming up is about this, like, actually, who is going to take control of this? Because I know, you know, it's like, um, I think it was, was it David McKenna, who was the guy from <laughs> South Africa? I think, you know, he was saying, you know, as he said it, you know, I, I, I live in a country where, you know, we sort of, we have data protection regulations, but nobody does anything about yep. them. Um, so, you know, there is this, I, I, I suppose there is this challenge that we're going to have in terms of like, actually, who is going to take control of this? Yeah, well, who's going to have regulation around yeah. it? I mean, it's already started in, in, in Europe. Like, they've already started investigating, um, and it's still relatively new. But I do expect that there will be regulation coming out in terms of what and how. And, and the other really great point that was brought up during that session, I don't recall who said it, was you also don't necessarily know the source. So when you're getting information out of that tool, you don't know what source was used to generate the information. So you really don't know the accuracy of it or, or potential bias of it. And that, that's another big concern. Like with Google, when you search in Google, it says, all right, here's the answers based on what you searched. And you can see the website, you can see when it was published, you can get all that. But you don't get that same level of information at, out of a tool like that. So I think the transparency will be another place where you'll likely see some regulation or some way to flag. And I know there's some of it now to say, hey, you know, this could be suspicious information. I don't know exactly how they word it. But, you know, the other great point that was made is, well, once this is in a full loop automation and there's no humans involved, how does that influence what's coming in or out of the system? Because the computer is not going to know to read that or, you know, how do you build the logic into it? So it'll be very interesting to see how this evolves over the next, you know, couple of years. It's moved so fast already. Yeah. And I mean, that we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that AI to AI thing, because that I, I thought that was a really interesting point. Um, but you were talking, you, you kind of alluded there about not knowing where data, or alluded to not knowing where data is coming from. Um, and that, yeah, that element of trust. You know, this is the thing that somebody said to me the other day, AI comes from, a, or, or certainly, you know, chat GPT comes from, in particular, comes from, a, comes from a, a, an environment where everything is true. 
So it's just, and it's it's scraping data from all over the place. You have no, as you say, you have no control. You have no knowledge of where that's coming from. The, you know, and the, one of the guys pointed out, you know, there's obviously clearly there's a legal implication to that potentially down the line. Yep. Certainly, when you know, you know, the Americans are notoriously litigious, so it could be that if anybody's using the data. But yeah, so I, but just to bring it back, is that how do we go about building that trust? Yeah, so I think I think there's two aspects. One, you have to figure out, do you want to use something that's public versus private? And, and that's that's an evolution. I think right now, a lot of people are using kind of public services or putting things in there. And for certain parts of your business, it will make total sense to do that. Like, you know, if you need to crowdsource information and kind of build, and we even talked about like the bios, some of the speakers for that had to use it yeah, to generate yeah, their bios, fun. which I thought was a genius yeah, idea. Yeah, I need exactly. to do that. Um, <laughs> And, and things like that, I think, are lower risks. So you're able to, to take that information and safely put it out there. Where when you're dealing with your own internal customer information, proprietary information, things like that, that's where you're going to have to figure out, how do I load this internally? Or how do I put it in a, in a, a way such that it's protected so that I'm not really the, uh, the data that's for sale? Because yeah. I, that, like, that's something they have to work through. So I think certain business processes you'll see evolve. And as businesses adapt it, um, then you're going to see them kind of fold into different pockets. And then the other half will be transparency. Like the regulation piece, I think, is is big, but also transparency for who's using it, how are they using it. The lawsuits to me are, are mm. were brought up, and it was an, uh, something I hadn't really thought about, which mm. is, you know, if I'm taking somebody else's intellectual property and I don't realize it because it's not clear to me, then what? I, I mean, you know, from a from a business perspective, especially there's somebody like Enable where we have intellectual pro all sorts of different intellectual property. If we found out we were using somebody else's inside of our company, that'd be a, a huge business risk. Yeah, I mean, and, and the, so off that, uh, the, the subject that kept coming back is guardrails. Yeah. You know. I think, and that's what you need. I mean, with, with all tech, and I don't think it's specific to this, it's all things, all technologies, it, it doesn't really matter what it is or how it is. I mean, you know, we, we were talking about even just self-driving cars mm. they have guardrails here's where we operate here's where we don't operate we you know we have a driver in place as a backup as a fail safe and that will continue to evolve and i fully expect within the next probably 10 years we'll have fully self-driving cars where that evolves while the technology right now is not new the speed at which it hit the market and grew popularity and is being rapidly adopted by businesses yeah. that's where you're gonna i think see more attention and that like whether it be regulation whether it be businesses thinking about how do they implement it effectively i think awareness is a big a, a huge piece of that is how do you talk to your employees to make sure that they're using it in an effective manner that doesn't introduce risks themselves or the organization and that's where you start to organically build those guardrails and it's not it's not the wild west but we're still mm. we're just still very early on in that cycle yeah and i suppose the the, the other thing that again i mean this came up and i know that you know, we'd, we'd, we'd had a speaker on before that kind of mentioned something about, you know, we're the only, we're the first platform to have, you know, chat GPT built into it. Do you think we're in danger of, of, of rushing in there because, you know, vendors, suppliers want to be the first to be implementing chat GPT or AI generally? So I, I think that's where you need to re review what and how your vendors are doing it, what data they're sharing, how are they using that to enrich their offering? Because I do think it offers a ton of value. And naturally in this space we are tinkers i mean you know i'll yeah, be the first to admit i'm an it geek always have been yeah, i like sure. i like this type of stuff i love technology so we organically kind of have that desire to get into those those new pieces of technology but i think as a business what you have to understand is, is what risk are you introducing to your business in doing that um, but done in a controlled manner where you really have kind of suppressed what the possible outcomes are and, and limited that risk, I, th I think it's a great thing for business to adopt. But it, but you just have to be aware of, of the what and the how and the why. Yeah, and I think that came out, I think it was Alex, um, mm -hmm. I can't remember his surname, but it was, it was Alex that came up with the point that um, M MSPs are, you know, a, a logical place for people to be beta testing the technology, checking it out, finding out, finding out where the problems are, but also then finding out where the opportunities and the business applications are. Yeah, I, specifically like when I think about it for writing PowerShell scripts and other things like that, mm. or you know, even the, to the topic that came up about, okay, we want to write this script, but then we want to do all this HTML and like the fact that it can build it so rapidly, yeah. like that's a huge benefit because mm. you know, I'm not a good developer. I never mm. have been. I'm not good at writing comments. I, it's usually quick and easy and it gets me what I need, but it doesn't do any of the pretty pieces. Yeah, but having the opportunity to to 
get some of that information out of it in a kind of very neutral way, that's a huge benefit. So I think what you'll see is better products. Mm. Um, you'll see better applications of, of whether it be scripts or whatever else you're building. What you're gonna have to watch is like how much detail are are individuals putting in there. Like, all right, write this, and here's the username and password to use to make the API connection. But once you start feeding that in, that's where you introduce the business risk. So that's mm. where the guardrails are really important. Yeah. But uh, but I definitely think it's MSP specifically. It will help accelerate. It will, and um, I don't remember who brought it up. But somebody on the panel even brought up. If it will enable my folks to have more individual FaceTime with our customers, you're talking to a person, yeah. and it frees them up to to have that that human interaction, which is important to them as a business owner, which I think is phenomenal. Like that's where you develop those relationships and, and those strong partnerships with your customers. That was a really interesting point, actually, because that came from that came from a question from the audience where one of the guys was saying, "Look, you know, we're seeing we're seeing people go to our customers." and undercutting us because they're going, oh, we can use AI and AI is going to dramatically reduce the, the cost the, the, the costs of, of, of us providing you a service. And it's like, you know, as an honest MSP, how do you keep up with that? Yeah, well, and I, the, I think there's another aspect and we didn't really come up with it up there, but mm. the MSP isn't just delivering, I'm going to go patch your system. They're delivering a holistic set of solutions yeah. to protect a business and make sure it's resilient. And Artificial intelligence doesn't do all those things. It may make the ability to write a, a code or check for patching or things like that. It may make that very easy, but sitting down and saying, okay, here's how your business runs. Here's where the risks are in your business. Here's you know, where we need to make sure we have business continuity and disaster recovery set up. Here's external risks to your business, whether it be through phishing emails or through, uh, through, through endpoint protections. Like that is coming up with a holistic solution to protect a business, not automate it. And, you know, I, I would almost ask, like, if you have a customer who's saying, I want, you know, the, the best for the least, is there, are their expectations realistic? And do you really want them as a customer? Like, like that's, that's, that's a hard question to ask, yeah. but I think as a business, like you want somebody who's conscious of the value you're adding, not what a script can save them. Like it, if it's gonna save you 27 cents, is it really worth fracturing a business relationship you've worked so hard to, to, to build and you've got that trust and the trust is like no, no AI can replace trust. Yeah, which is, and that, that kind of links, that links a few points that I, I was going to raise quite nicely together. I mean, firstly, uh, I thought there was that great, great quote that the guy came out with. It's like, you know, AI isn't going to take your jobs, but somebody who knows AI is. And, you know, I think the implication of that is the fact that we still need that level of human interaction because as one of the other guys raised the idea of AI to AI decision making at the moment now potentially that's a bit scary that's kind of where that's potentially where you get into Skynet territory well maybe I mean, like I said we just need to teach it tic-tac-toe I yeah. mean that worked in the movie back in, I forget when war games <laughs> came out back in the early 80s yeah, yeah. but they learned then that like war was inevitable and nobody can win yeah. but um but yeah, I mean, I do think the AI to AI, what you're going to see at first is more private to private, where it's very controlled data sets interacting in such a manner. It's not that different now from what we do where you're linking APIs together with orchestration platforms to say, okay, take data, do these four or five steps, pass it back. Um, so I don't, but that will be very controlled. I don't think you're going to see widespread, like we're going to automate 100% of our business on this. Mm. Um, there'll be those specific use cases that, that really add tremendous value. And it's gonna take time and expertise. Like mm. the reality is, is right now we have a platform, but putting data in, understanding how to make that data and manipulate it in such a way that it's it's effectively used by the end user. Like that's gonna take time and expertise and training. And, mm. and even David had mentioned that in that, that, uh, that chat, he had sent people to training and you know they, they he felt like they came out as kind of generalists not experts like mm. the training is evolving too for how do you apply that to your business so all these things we're just in our infancy it's just going to take time yeah. for us to, to mature into it because there was uh, i know somebody also raised the point of certification and, and what they were saying i think was it they were saying that uh, microsoft has certificates is it microsoft i think microsoft, microsoft and amazon both do yeah uh, so people people have you know again it's like yeah that that's a process that's going to evolve even the certification is going to evolve oh um, it has but, to but we have to put we have to we have to put or at least we have to be seen to be putting those things in place now at this stage well 
Yeah, because it's so new. Again, mm -hmm. and I was interested to know what his thoughts were having sent put people. He, did, he made the investment to send people to training and grow mm -hmm. his individuals in the company to support it. And to hear he came out of that saying, yeah, we're it's not ready for us yet in, mm -hmm. in certain regards. Like, I think that's good feedback. It's honest and transparent feedback. So, um, but yeah, that'll continue to evolve and how do you use it and how do you apply it and how do, how do businesses, I mean, you know, even to the point of, and this hasn't happened yet, but you know, when, when you get into data processing and like around GDPR, like when you see a DPA that says, oh, we're gonna send your data to an external AI, that will c cause all sorts of concerns. And people aren't thinking about how their how mm -hmm. their data is being used yet, but but we're going to go there. We're going to go there in the not too distant future. I'm going to I'm going to guess it's, you know, it's it, it's a different type of data lake, but you can ultimately interrogate it for the same answers. Which again, I mean that that brings us up to, again. One of the other things that came up was accountability. Uh, you know, in terms of what to, I think I think it was around uh, you you posed the question. You know, what do we need to what do we need to see before we move forward? And I think one of the guys said accountability and the fact that, you know, yeah. Whose responsibility is it for, for exactly what you're saying? If, if, if you put data into an AI uh, or an AI scrapes data from somewhere and you use that, whose responsibility is that? Then if somebody comes back to you and goes, well, hang on, that's my intellectual property you're using there. Yep. You know, is it, is, is it the MSP? Is it the client? Is it the, you know, does it need to be written into contracts? I think that's, you know, I mean, there, there are... <laughs> Not quite an infinite number of possibilities around this, but there are, you know, there are still a lot of big areas. But that sort of question around accountability did, did seem to be a pretty major kind of concern. Yeah. Well, even if you think about, like, if you take the GDPR lens, if a individual's data is scraped into it and is being used to aggregate in some way, and they request the right to be forgotten, like, how are you going to handle that as a business? Um, you know, so that is a legal right everybody has under GDPR. Is is to understand what data you have, how it's being used, and either get a copy of it, or have yourself removed from it. Like, but those are all things that we're like we're still early enough on that nobody's asking those. And maybe they are, and I just don't hear it just from where yeah. I'm based. Yeah. But those are questions businesses are going to have to deal with. Um, yeah. And, and they have to be prepared to to really orchestrate a response to it. And I think, you know, just I mean, kind of closing out really because I mean, it, it, the the issues I think we could sit here and talk about this for hours because there are there are so many questions and I, I don't think either of us profess to being anywhere near to being able to provide answers but really to kind of like you know raise the, raise the subject talk about the subject and just kind of put it out there and and I think that was the the useful thing about doing it with a you know a, a group of a group of MSPs you know as Dave Weeks as David Weeks always says it's kind of like you know the answer is in the room and being in a position to kind of like start that conversation um, but yeah I think it's you know it's 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 it's, it's fascinating uh, and I think there's a lot of there's a lot of things still to come and there's a lot of questions that we've raised that I think people need to start looking at. yeah totally agree David thank you very much for your time thank you it's fun.